an explanation of our TV show. The show is comprised of a series of our short films about our lives. Then there are shorter interstitial films laced throughout. All of these elements are combined, and that's the TV show. Here's how we make this show. For each episode, we have six weeks to shoot, write, and edit a 30-minute television show. Casey is responsible for 15 minutes of content, and I'm responsible for 15 minutes. Casey and I divide our allotted 15 minutes into a few short movies, ranging from 16 seconds to 18 minutes long. The easiest part of the process is the shooting. We basically just go live our lives for a month, making sure we have at least one video camera with us at all times. Then we shoot stuff we find interesting. Which brings us to the edit, by far the toughest part of the process. By far the toughest part of the process. What you just watched was 43 seconds long and took two days to edit. We have to take hundreds and hundreds of shots from our month and then cut them into some kind of cohesive story by the movies range from 16 seconds to 18 minutes. We've done a lot of stuff over the last month and I want to touch on all of it. So for this episode, I'm taking my 15 minutes and making 15 movies. I'm going to try to keep each movie under one minute. This intro will be over a minute and it counts as one of the 15 movies, so I'm starting at a deficit. Here is movie number two. <laughs> the sound for this movie has been dubbed. That means afterwards. This episode, I'm switching to a higher resolution camera. Never mind her. After I shaved my beard into this mustache, no one would take me seriously anymore. I said to go around this ravine, and no one listened. Oh my God. I said, careful, this door will come off, and no one listened. We sent Joe to get some food, and uh, came back with a bumper. I said, not this rental too, and no one listened. But I shaved this mustache for art's sake, and look how good I look in this scene. Morning, is your mom home? Last shot of the film right now. Got about 10 minutes before the sun dips. This is what we're looking at. This is what a bunch of New England boys look like when they're in Arizona, far away from home, and the Patriots win the big game. Yeah! 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 No doubt, there was no doubt! Yeah! Yeah! Didn't even have to watch it! <sighs> Hello there. So Van's making 15 one minute movies. That will make up half of this 30 minute episode. I'll be making three five minute movies to cover the other half. The first of these three movies is about a rock concert. Yes. I'll figure it out. Come hell or high water, I'll be on a plane to London tomorrow night. We were leaving Arizona in the Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport when I got a text message from one of the coolest girls I know. Do you like Led Zeppelin? Like, yeah, heaviest band ever. Do you want to fly to London on Monday and see that one off reunion with me? Yep, email me the details immediately. Mickey's one of my closest friends. In March, we made a border run, drove from LA to Tijuana, and then spent my 26th birthday on the dirty beaches of Rosarito, Mexico. I hadn't seen her in a while as she's been in London. I missed her. Arizona now. In 48 hours, I'll be on my way to London to see Led Zeppelin. And 48 hours later, I was on another plane. This, I would like to take a moment to talk about. In 
Air India is the best worst airline in the world. I upgraded to business class for an extra 400 beans, and for that I got a seat that turns into a bed, which is the best. I also got dinner served on proper china, but despite my business class status, I could still only identify roughly 40% of the food that comprised my meal. This was the salad. I still have no fucking idea what this Asian disc could possibly be, or this gloop they offered us for dessert. Everyone else seemed to enjoy it though. Just look at those stomachs. London. London is my sixth or seventh or eighth favorite city in the world. I had 18 hours in London before my flight back to New York, so Mickey and I made the most of it. Despite her British accent, having spent the better part of her entire life in London, we spent our entire day like proper tourists. We looked at some maps, rode around in those funny looking cabs, went on that double decker red bus, had tea. We were just like Clark and Ellen Griswold. And then it got dark outside. And then it started. Pardon the interruption. The part in the movie where I show the concert. The greatest rock concert of my entire life. But here's the rub. I can't play any Led Zeppelin music at all because we'll get sued. So how am I supposed to illustrate this life-changing musical experience without playing any music I heard? I can show you Jimmy Page with his dual guitar. And I can show you 17,000 screaming British fans. But I can't play any of the music for you. So I can't figure out how to do this. If anyone can figure out how to do this, call me at 877-812-0404 and I'll re-edit this part of the TV show. Sorry again for the interruption. It was the best concert ever. And then I had to say goodbye to Mickey and fly back to New York. Have you ever had a tape dispenser that didn't do this? How about trying to tape up a box using one hand? Impossible. Until now. Meet Big Job. Big Job is the packing tape dispenser that guarantees a perfect cut every time. It is in Big Job's solid steel base. Simply load Big Job with standard two inch packing tape and you're ready to start taping. Slip free silicone feet and Big Job's hefty 15 pound base ensure perfect tape tearing every time. Thank you, Big Job.
1989, Steven Spielberg introduced the Cinematographer's Merit Badge to the Boy Scouts of America, and I aim to earn that badge. One of the requirements for the Boy Scout Cinematographer Merit Badge is to shoot a vignette that could be used to train a new scout in a scouting skill. Thank you. The scouting skill that I would like to demonstrate in this film is the proper way to pass a knife, scissors, or any other sharp, potentially dangerous tool to another person. Thank you. Step one, pass the knife handle first. Step two, most people don't know this step. Wait until the receiver says thank you. Thank you. It is now safe to release the knife. This ensures that neither party drops the dangerous object. Thank you. The second of my three five-minute movies. This one's about Christmas Day. A December 25th, 5.05 a.m. 5 a.m. Christmas morning, and once again, I'm in the airport. Here's how it was supposed to go. 6 a.m. flight from New York City to Denver. 9.25 flight from Denver to Aspen. In Aspen by 10.30, and on the slopes by 11. But then, here's what actually happened. My flight to Denver started out okay. I upgraded to first class and they gave me a fancy omelet for breakfast. It gave me diarrhea for three days. As we got closer to Denver, the weather got worse. There was a blizzard and Denver's getting hit hard. Whiteout like conditions. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who dreamt of a white Christmas, you definitely have one here in Denver. Welcome to Denver. We were the last flight they let land, and we barely made the landing. Rescue crews were standing by for our arrival. Then they canceled nearly every flight in and out of the airport. I hung around in the terminal for a couple of hours. I kept having weird Santa sightings. They finally said, come to the gate. Then they let us out onto the tarmac. We walked by all the airplanes and boarded a bus. I guess they do this a lot out here. Six hours on this cramped, crowded bus where they wanted the guys to pee sitting down. Eight hours late, but I made it. We made it to Aspen, no problem. And then I had one of the most fun weeks of my entire life. I did a lot of snowboarding. Nice. Hung out with some friends. And Tom Sachs came out. Then he broke my video camera. It was a good Christmas. It's pretty incredible. <laughs> Open it up. I love that packaging. Do something cool. What am I gonna do? And that's the first thing Sam bought. My childhood friend and mentor Sam struck it rich this year and moved to Miami Beach. This Boston whaler was the boat he always wanted when we were kids. I used to think Miami was a little lame and plasticky, 
flush with cash but short on soul. That's Scarface's house. Sam's taking a lesson because he crashed into this boat last week. After Sam's lesson, Captain John took us across Biscayne Bay to this place called Virginia Key. To a shrimp shack called Jimbo's. This is uh, America. This is not a third world country. Look. This is exactly like what a third world country looks like. My favorite shrimp shack on earth. We just upgraded to business. Transatlantic. Lately I've been taking about eight flights a month, but this is the second time I've ever flown business class in my entire life. It's a big deal to me. Stop Zurich. Every time Casey and I take a flight together, he says to me, what do you think they're eating up in business class? And every time, I wonder. The wine starts coming before you even leave the ground. Hijacker silverware. The lamb shank tasted like feet. I had about four of these. This Sunday had cold ice cream and hot, hot fudge. Normal, easy, easier, sleep, <laughs> sleep. All right, so we're back on our old camera. We're in Zurich, Switzerland, and we have to transfer to our next flight. This is Coach. That's business. Dear Chloe, thanks for the fireworks. Love, Van. It's the Ultra Pro V selection. <laughs> <laughs> Only the best wow. for you, sweetheart. Ignition sequence. We have ignition. Berlin has a great law on the books. For two days out of the year, citizens may light off fireworks in the street. Everyone takes advantage of this law. As a reward, I gave these children a book of matches. Hey! Just listen to the sound of this town right now. Just listen to the sound. Cheers! This is what the last moments of the best year of my life looked and sounded like. My third and final installment in this episode, Vegas. Goodbye, Aspen. I flew directly from Aspen to Las Vegas. I was going to Vegas because this guy I know, Mark, was getting married there. You see, when I was 19 years old, I lived in Mystic, Connecticut, and I worked in a restaurant called Jams. And this is the trailer I used to live in right there. That white one. This footage is from 1999, when I lived in that trailer park. That's my son Owen when he was just a baby. When Owen's mom and I broke up, I moved in with Mark, who was a cook at the restaurant. 
Ten years ago, we lived together, right here in these condos. I hadn't heard from him in years, and a few months ago he called to tell me he was marrying the bartender from that same restaurant, and that their wedding was going to be in Vegas. I see him there, and I'm a man of my word. I wasn't sure how much I would have in common with Mark and the rest of his friends from the restaurant, so I flew Candace out because everyone always likes her. The first night we stayed in a penthouse suite at the Mandalay Bay. Mark and his friends came over. We got horribly drunk and a couple people fell in the jacuzzi. <laughs> this is Mark here, giving me high five. The hotel room was flooded. So we put on our Vegas shirts and hit the casino. I didn't care much for that hotel anyway. The next day, Candace and I switched to a much, much better place. This movie is called The Fanciest Hotel Room I've Ever Stayed In. You walk through the dirt hole casino, you go into the secret elevator room, and then the secret elevator. Secret hotel. And into the room. Downstairs, coffee, refrigerator, bar, living room, view, office, upstairs. Bedroom, bedroom view, bathroom, TV, TV, bathtub, shower, and closet. And this is the fanciest hotel room I've ever stayed in. The wedding was short and sweet and kind of ironic. <laughs> After the ceremony, everyone came back to our hotel room for a drink. And then we had buffalo wings and did Irish car booters. It was probably the best wedding I've ever been to. When I was a kid, there was this commercial where a kid asks an owl how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. Three, three. I came up with this idea one night when it was taking forever to eat a bowl of tomato soup. This experiment, I've mixed one can of tomato soup with one can of water. 20 and one half fluid ounces total. My wife guessed that there would be 87 spoonfuls. I guessed 187, then came to my senses and changed my guess just before shooting this.